Hey, good morning. We're at 1 Samuel 13, verse 15 to 23, straight to it. Then Samuel arose and went up from Gilgal to Gibeah of Benjamin, and Saul numbered the people present with him about 600 men. Saul, Jonathan his son, and the people present with them remained in Gibeah of Benjamin, but the Philistines encamped at Michmash. Then raiders came out of the camp of the Philistines in three companies. One company turned onto the road of Ophrah to the land of Shul, and the other company turned to the road to Beth Horon, and the other, another company turned to the road of the border of the, that overlooks the valley of Zeboim toward the wilderness. Now there was no blacksmith to be found throughout all the land of Israel, for the Philistines said, lest the Hebrews make swords or spears. But all the Israelites would go down to the Philistines to sharpen each man's plowshare, his mattock, his axe, and his sickle. And the charge for a sharpening was a pim for the plowshares and the mattocks, the forks, and the axes, and to set the points of the goads. So it came about on the day of battle that there was neither sword nor spear found in the hand of any of the people who were with Saul and Jonathan, but they were found with Saul and Jonathan his son. And the garrison of the Philistines went out to the pass of Mishmash. So here's the setting. Again, the armies are gathering up. There's going to be a big a big battle. What did we see here the other day? 6,000 horsemen. The Hebrews don't have that. Many soldiers, like the sand of the sea. The Hebrews don't have that many. 30,000 chariots. I mean, that's, that's the premium. That's like the top weaponry you could have there. Of course, it depends on which terrain you're fighting in. But this, this made the Hebrews really tremble. And now we learn <laughs> that, that only, only Jonathan and Saul have sharp weapons. The, the other guys don't even have sharpened weapons. Uh, what do they have? Sticks? Do they have spears without, uh, with, 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 with rock tips? What do they have? So they're totally militarily outmatched. The, the enemy force is larger. It has all kinds of gear that they don't have. And now we find out that uh, they've only got one or two weapons that are actually bladed weapons. And everybody else has, has what? You know, garden hose? They're going into war. It, this, this could only end in absolute, utter annihilation of God's people. But God's on their side. So we'll find out what happens next. But God is not happy with their leader, Saul. Saul has disregarded God's plan. We talked about that yesterday morning. So this is just kind of a setup for what happens now tomorrow morning and continues as we carry on through this section. But it looks it looks pretty skinny. It looks here like, you know, if you were living in the land of Israel, now might be a really good time for a really long, quiet vacation. And don't spend too much time packing. Get out while the getting is good. That might be the human response. But God is still for his people. So we'll leave it there and come back to it. Again, lesson for us, though, when things look hopeless, kind of like we had the lesson the other day, when things look impossible, we're outnumbered. Maybe it shouldn't. you shouldn't go on a big vacation. Instead, you should say, this is an opportunity for me to learn how to have faith, learn how to trust my God better. And he'll take care of the outcome. So let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, many times it will appear hopeless and outnumbered, but with you on our side, Lord, we know that there is only good things as we seek to be obedient and true to you. Again, we pray that you'll help our faith to be strengthened. Watch over us and help your people, Lord. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. May God be with you this day.